All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about angles, uh, specifically different parts of angles, how we name or describe angles and shapes, how we can some different comp, some common different types of angles, and then also how we can use angles to figure out measurements within pictures. So we'll try to go kind of quick. There's a bunch to go over. First, parts of an angle. So let's say we had an angle that looks like this. Now an angle is formed when two lines or rays intersect. So we'll have, we have two lines right there that are intersecting. The angle is going to be measured in degrees. Now within an angle, usually um, you're going to have kind of like parts, if you will. Um, we could say that this right here would be a point um, right there and another point down there. Um, and then this right here where the two angles actually are coming together, we have a specific name for that. We call that a vertex. Um, if we have more than one, we're talking vertices, but the vertex right there is the point where they come together. Now, often you will also find that you might have letters next to each point. So we might say that's letter A, B, or C. Sometimes those will be put for you. Sometimes you'll put them there. So then um, when we're naming an angle, so when I say naming an angle, it's just sort of describing a specific angle right now. We're just looking at a picture that just really has one angle right there. But there'll be other pictures where you'll have lots of different angles. So how do you describe and say that's the specific one I'm talking about? There's a couple of different ways. One way is you can use just the vertex. So again, the vertex is right here. It's that B point. So we could just simply say angle B. Okay, so when we're describing, we're using angle. It kind of looks like the less than symbol. Um, so it's, a, it's an angle and it should look a little bit like an angle. We could also start at one point, go to the vertex and go to another point. So one point would be right here. We go all the way to the vertex. That's your middle point. And then we go to the other point. So that means we would call it angle A, B, C. And you always start at one point, vertex in the middle, and then the other point. So I would write that as angle A, B, C. Now, conversely, you could do the same thing, just go in the other direction, right? You go angle C, B, A. So we could just say angle C, B, A. And then finally, the last way is to inscribe a number inside the angle. So sometimes you've got a lot of different points. You might just end up putting a number. So we could put the number one right there in between. And we could say that that would be angle one, right? That easy. So let's look at one more example of this. So let's say we had something like this and we were talking about this specific part right here, um, that angle, and we want to describe that. So our first way we could do it is we could use just the vertex. Now in this case, the vertex is B again. But if I say angle B, right? Like, well, technically that's an angle B, that's an angle B, and this whole part right here is angle B. So that's not very specific. And if we're talking again about like this part right here, we want to be specific. So we probably want to use the other one. So if we do point, vertex, point, we would start at one point go to the vertex, that's the center, and then go to the other point. So angle C, B, D, or angle D, B, C. Both of those would work. So I'll write those down. We could say angle C, B, D, or angle D, B, C. And then finally, the last way would be to inscribe some numbers. And so let's say we had, this was number two, and this was number three, since I already used one over there. Um, and we can call this technically angle four. We could say that the angle we're talking about specifically is angle three. So just ways to name the specific angle that you're talking about. We're gonna talk about some different types of angles. We'll go through some of these kind of quickly because we've talked about some of them before. Um, the first one is a right angle. A right angle right, is an angle that is 90 degrees. Usually you'll have this little box in here to indicate that it is 90 degrees. Acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. So you think of that angle up top and you just make something a little bit smaller than that. Obtuse angle would be an angle that is more than 90 degrees. So you take that L shape and you just happen to make it wider. We call that an obtuse angle. And then finally, a straight angle is an angle that is 180 degrees. So let's say you had this and you had your point and then the line kept going. So then technically you're talking about from here to here that makes 180 degrees. So 180 degrees is like half a circle. It's a straight line. In addition to those types of angles, you're also going to find some different types of angles where these are pairs of angles. So our first one would be a set of complementary angles. 
and it tells us our description. It's two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. Together they make a right angle. So you might see a picture that looks something like this, and you've got a right angle, and then within your right angle, let's say that it is cut into two pieces. So we say this is angle one, and then this right here, kind of hard to fit in there, is angle two. And so together, we would say angle one and angle two, those would be complementary angles. Together they make 90 degrees. If you were given the measurement of one of them, so let's say I told you that angle one equals 80 degrees, then knowing that they are complementary means you could just simply do 90 minus 80 to give you 10, which tells you that angle two must be 10 degrees, right? So you can do some of the math there to make sense of that. This is similar to something called supplementary angles. Supplementary angles are two angles whose sum is 180 degrees. Together they make a straight line. So you might see something like a line like this, and then let's say it is cut into two pieces like that. So we can see right there, we've got one right there, and we've got another one right there. Now together, those two angles again are gonna make a straight line. So if this was angle three and angle four, we would say angle three and angle four are supplementary. It's a pair of supplementary angles. Together they equal 180 degrees. And just like before, if I'm given the value of one of them, so let's say I was told that angle four is 80 degrees, you would know that since together they make 180 degrees, that angle three must be 100 degrees. Okay, so just basic math, 180 minus 80 is 100. You also have something called adjacent angles, two angles that share a vertex and a side. So let's say we kind of had a X sort of type of a shape where you have a couple angles here. So we've got four different angles, one, two, three, and four. Adjacent angles would just be ones that are next to each other. So they all share that same vertex right there. Um, but we could say, for instance, that angle one and angle two are adjacent because they are right next to each other. They have the same vertex and they share one side. We could also say that angles three and four, or we could say angle two and angle three, or angle one and angle four. You kind of get the idea, right? It's just next to each other. And then that takes us to our last pair, which are called vertical angles. These are two angles that are on opposite sides of a vertex and they are congruent. This part right here about being congruent is a really important part about vertical angles. So let's say I had, again, some of this. If you see an X, if you see those two lines going, you know you're gonna have some vertical angles. And we'll say this is five, six, seven, and eight. So the vertical pairs would be the opposite side. So the five and the seven, five and the seven, and then the eight and the six, those are both pairs. So angle five and angle seven, angle eight and angle six. And since they're congruent, that tells us that if we know one of them, so let's say I was to tell you that this is 135 degrees, you would know that the opposite of it, the opposite side from here to here is also gonna be 135 degrees degrees. And then you could even use a little bit of comp or supplementary angles to know that, that this angle 5 and angle 6 together would be supplementary and they make 180, which would mean that this right here would have to be 45 degrees. And then the opposite side would be the same thing. Okay, So these are all the main types of angles you're going to be using. And then our final thing is how can we use all that to actually do some math to make some sense of something. And so let's say you have a picture right here and you're given one measurement. So let's say you are told that this right here is 60 degrees. Now once you know that that's 60 degrees, you can actually figure out every other angle in this picture. So we can do a few things to figure that out. Um, the first thing I notice is I notice that we've got a right angle right here. And then we see we've got a kind of a matching side right here. And when you, I'm actually going to kind of scribble out something and then I'll put it back. But if I sort of cover up or block out those lines, I can just see all that's left is that X right here. And we have opposite sides and those opposite sides are going to be the same. So we know that this angle right here uh, is going to be 90 degrees. And this one right here 
we already know is going to be 90 degrees. Now if we want to look for some other opposite angles or vertical angles, we can, again, sometimes I like to kind of like cross out the other parts so I don't really think about them or see them, but we can see we've got an X and on our X we've got two sides right here and right here would be on the opposite sides of the X. These are vertical angles, which means that they are going to have the same measurement. So if I know that this is 60 degrees down here, this is also going to be 60 degrees right here. Now I can use a couple different ways to figure out the two remaining parts. I could think about that idea of complementary angles and think that this right here and this right here together they make that 90 degree angle okay they make that right angle right there so since together complementary angles equal 90 degrees that would mean that this is 60 that means the one next to it is going to have to be 30 degrees because 30 plus 60 equals 90 then I would see that on the opposite side I'm going to see a match like that I could also think about this idea of making 180 degrees and I might even look and say that oh from here to here that makes a straight line and I know two of the measurements one's 90 and 160 together they're gonna have to make 180 degrees so I could subtract from 180 right there or I could look at the vertical angle or I could look at the complementary angle right so there's lots of ways to do this but this right here would be 30 degrees and then if I wanted to name my angles and say what's there, angle B, C, D, right, which I go point, vertex, point, that's going to be 60 degrees, 60 degrees. We could say angle D, C, E is going to equal 30 degrees. Angle E, C, F is 90 degrees. Angle, I'm just working my way around, F, C, G is going to equal 60 degrees, right? And again, remember, I'm always going point, vertex, point. That C, the middle point, is always in the middle of my angles. And then that leaves me with two left. We have angle G, C, A is going to be 30 degrees. And then finally, angle A, C, B is going to equal 90 degrees. So that's how we can kind of use these vertical angles, complementary angles, supplementary angles to figure out missing measurements.